All right. Looks like we're live. Welcome to the Night Hunting Podcast. <clears throat> this is the a night. It's basically a podcast all about night hunting and for night hunters. And my name is Tony Brew. I am your host. And in this episode number 18, we're going to be talking about night hunting safety. So, <clears throat> Excuse me. So, <clears throat> so recently, right now it's it's a, the end of June 2023, and recently there's been there was actually a hunting accident that got posted uh, maybe a week or so ago, and it just kind of brought me into um, basically wanting to talk about you know safety. And this goes, there's so much you can talk about when it comes to safety. And I mean, from my kids to just being aware at nighttime, what's going on and how things can get out of whack really quick and how just really, you know, to set this stuff up from the beginning and try to really protect, you know, what's a good thing for a, a good night hunting thing to taking it to a really, really serious thing really quick. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first uh, figure out how to share my screen. Give me a second. All right, so we got that there. And then I want to move my dude up there. I think that should put us there, possibly. Let me see. No, it's not putting me there. Dang it. Uh, wonder how I can put that up there. Okay, no, it's sitting there. Okay, cool. So basically with this um, accident, it happened in, well, before we get into that, let's talk about safety. So number one, the first thing I want to talk about is total darkness. Um, you know, back in the day, whenever there was night hunting, there were spotlights from a vehicle, whatever. But now the stuff that we do or that I do is basically, you know, we ride in fields and properties um, through the woods in complete darkness in a golf cart. And we have all of our stuff there, weapons, sometimes, most of the time, two people, sometimes three, sometimes even four people. Now, uh, having four people is definitely a big deal, um, and I'm always very, very aware of what's going on. I try to be the leader of the whole thing whenever there are four people, just so that, you know, to, to protect anything we can, which is other things and also ourselves, because, you know, things can get out of whack really quick. So, you know, the groups or my my personal entourage when I'm out um, generally consists of a uh, thermal monocular so that I can spot with. And then I also have a short, um, short barreled AR rifle that I only run five, five rounds at a time in. And I also carry a second magazine. So I'm, I'm unlimited to 10 rounds pretty much anyways. And basically I run a thermal on top of that. Um, and then my buddy that I generally hunt with, or most of my buddies, they all have thermals as well. So you know, I kind of move around from buddy to buddy, but generally it's one or it's me and one other person and sometimes more. And that's just the baseline of what we're going to talk about here. So generally we will, you know, we're riding around in the golf cart. We are, um, you know, use, I'm using the monocular to drive if it's not bright enough, but generally where I live, there's a lot of lights that come from cities and they just light the sky up pretty well. Although um, on a dark, dark night in the woods, it's really hard to see. And so I use the monocular whenever I need to, but generally we ride, we see something, we stop. Sometimes we'll shoot off of the cart stops. We never shoot off a moving cart. That's really hard to do anyways and dangerous. But um, sometimes we will see something stop 
shoot off the cart or we will get off and set the tripods up because we have tripods that we shoot off of and generally they are fully extended and ready to go so that whenever we do see something or if we're calling we're just we just take it off and we put the gun on there and we're good to go so the the pro the thing is you know i've been in situations where we stop the cart and one person will be off the back of the cart and the other person will be off the front of the cart which is fine but there's sometimes where we've been where we have to line up um, in a row. And this is where things could get hairy because you just, you know, with when you're pumping rounds out, I mean, it, it just, you know, there's a lot going on right there. And especially when you're in total darkness and you're looking through a digital screen, kind of like a video game, it's definitely could get really hairy. So the first thing that I'm going to do first thing that I'm going to do whenever I even get to that situation is I'm going to say, okay, well, let's get in the line here. You know, the person on the far right shoots everything to the right. The person on the far left shoots everything to the left and the person in the middle kind of catches the middle, but just make sure that you don't over rotate, make sure you're aware at all times where you're shooting and just really, really, you know, take, awareness and notice of what's going on with the barrel of your gun and where and you know i can honestly say that i've been in the mix of shooting before and it's i mean sometimes you don't lose control but sometimes things you know can get going really quick and then you know things can happen so that being said i mean i'm just going to talk about a situation we had uh, maybe you know, two months ago, uh, watermelons, you know, we were in a watermelon field. There was a group of 20 plus pigs in the next field over. They were coming across into the watermelon field and actually seven of them came across the fence. Um, and by the way, I'm not going to, I can't show thermal footage on a live video because this is a live video. So I can't really show that, but I can definitely talk about it. And then um, in a few minutes, I'm going to let you hear audio of that um of another situation that happened um where people were shooting at pigs and somebody got shot so anyway so we're lined up three three wide and uh the pigs come out and as soon as the pigs are coming 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 to where we're less than 40 yards from these pigs we're set up in a line um and they're coming straight you know across the fence we're facing we're, we're just basically parallel to them and they get there and then uh, at, at some point one person shoots and we all shoot and uh, I think we dropped four pigs in that group. So I um, mean, and, and you, you got to understand once one shot goes, uh, everything pretty much the pigs start running. I mean, everything just gets really, really uh, hairy, really quick. So in the process of that, I basically shot one, maybe shot another one that was trying to run out, um, but we ended up with four. And, you know, like I said in the beginning, before we even shot, I made sure that I told, you know, I try to make sure that I give people what my uh, assumption is or what my intention is of what I think is going to happen and, you know, what I'm going to try to do before it even happens, just so that they know what I'm going to do and they understand that, you know, I'm aware and trying to you know, put it, put the plant the seed in their mind that they should be aware as well. So, so that's, you know, what happened there. And then I've definitely been in other situations where there's been multiple shooters. Sometimes we've been in a spot where we're in the middle of a field and we're, we're basically with, you know, surrounding the golf cart and one person shooting one direction, another, another direction, another, another direction. Um, there, you know, there's all kinds of scenarios that happen, but again, you know, our, our rule or my rule is, you know, if you have an animal that if you have multiple animals and one's on the right, one's on the left, you know, the person on the left takes the one on the left, the person on the right takes the one on the right. Um, that's generally what we do. We try not to shoot in front of somebody or try not to shoot towards somebody, obviously not towards somebody, but, you know, moving like shooting in front of them and, uh, you know, just really try to be aware of what's going on. So, so that being said um i would think that you know whenever you're calling coyotes and coyotes are coming in 
that's a whole different scenario versus like a group of pigs. I mean, the most pigs I've ever been able to shoot at, again, I'm in North Central Florida, and the most pigs we've ever shot at here has been 22. And funny thing on that, we started shooting at that group and the biggest pig had five bullet holes in it. And I think everybody tried to shoot the biggest pig and nobody, really, we only killed one out of that group. <laughs> but anyways, we ended up killing more later, um, which was the story I told in the beginning about the, the seven that came across the fence line. But with, you know, with coyotes, it's definitely a lot different because they're, you know, I've seen, I've, I've called up to six out of a tree line at one time. And it's just a lot different. You know, they're not, yes, they can take off running and they can run super fast, but it's not like pigs where pigs just, split, you know, there's 22 pigs in this group or 16 pigs in this other group, you know, then the pigs, they are just absolutely crazy when they're trying to get away from gunfire. So, and even deer has been the same way. Like we do a lot of deer depredation as well. And still the same, the same rule applies, you know, be aware of where you're shooting at try to tell, you know, I try to tell, Hey, this is my game plan. And it doesn't always go that way, but at least you're trying. So, so that's pretty much, you know, as far as that goes, as far as like the way that I try to handle it um, again, you know, trying to get, go in there with a game plan in the beginning just really helps the situation. And, you know, it really only takes one time to, mess up and shoot somebody and then you know you could lose access to a property you could just lose a lot you could lose a friend i mean or lose a life i mean that's just really serious stuff we're talking about especially being in total darkness and you know doing this kind of thing so so with that being said i'm gonna pull up this uh let's see i'll pull up that in a minute with that being said i'm gonna pull up this this video here and I'm not really sure how loud it's going to be. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit and then try to adjust it. But this, I can't show the video again because it's is a live video and YouTube does not allow live thermal, any kind of live thermal um, hunting. And there's definitely pigs getting whacked in this video. And I'm talking about, there is a lot of pigs getting whacked in this. I mean, there's a lot of pigs in this video. But what I'm going to do is play this. You can hear the audio. And then in the end, um, just to kind of give you an idea of what can definitely happen. So here we go. So with that being said, I mean, obviously there was a ton of pigs in that field and those guys had high capacity magazines, no knock against that. Just in my state, you know, you're not really supposed to be, I don't know, the rules kind of weird. Um, a while ago you could, and then you couldn't. And I just hunt with five. I mean, there's no reason to be shooting that much um, to me. Like that's just a lot of bullets and, you know, I just, it's just a lot and a lot can go wrong with that many, but at the same time, you know, there's a lot of bullets flying there and boom, that dude gets shot. And, uh, that's a really serious thing. So safety, man, it's a big deal. And, you know, going back to, um, the safety thing in general, you know, I wanted to talk about, um, gun safety in general. You know, I have, I mean, I'm 46 years old and I've been, when I was nine years old, my dad would take me to the woods and with a shotgun and I would have my own, uh, me and my brother, we would kind of share a 410 or whatever. And, you know, we never really shot anything at that age, but we were still shooting like 22s and BB guns and stuff like that. Just learning about gun safety. And you want to talk about, um, you know, gun safety and stuff like that. like to me, 
gun safety is teaching people how to be safe with the guns. Guns don't just go off by themselves, you know, and it's teaching people right from wrong. And like, I have a seven year old and a four year old and both of them shoot. We, we have, I mean, we started out with those two. Um, I'm just going to pull up this uh, thing here. This is a post I made the other day. I'm in a, uh, I'm in this is Facebook. I'm in a, uh, I'm in a group. I'm in a for, uh, forum with uh, air guns and because I like air guns, they're kind of fun. And uh, this right here on the left is my four year old and he has the smallest uh, Daisy BB gun they make, which is a Daisy Buck. And this is my seven year old and my seven year old um, has a regular size, but his broke that day. So he's shooting the PCP here, which is a 25 caliber uh, Air Force Talon SS and with a night hunting scope on it. And basically we are out at our um, in-laws property and this is a huge like 15 acre property. This is just a pile of brush here with a just a cardboard target shooting into the trees there. And there's, you know, we're just practice shooting. And to be honest, my seven year old is really good with a BB gun, just open sights and he's starting to get really good with scopes. And uh, he really wants his own 22 since his BB gun broke. And I'm sure that'll be coming soon. But the thing is, uh, my four-year-old, you know, with him, he can cock the gun. And we always watch him whenever he has it. And we always try to, you know, um, give him a little leeway. But at the same time, keep an eye on him and teach him not to point the gun at people and teach him how to keep it on safety whenever he's not shooting. And try not to even cock it if you're not going to shoot. And also... Um, just to teach him how to even aim with open sights because this has just got open sights on it. And the coolest thing happened um, a couple of days ago when we went out is that, you know, he's starting to get where he can hit stuff with it. And he just started shooting here and was hitting that cardboard at 25 yards with, with his BB gun, which I thought was super cool because um, in previous times, you know, he just he couldn't hit anything. He didn't understand the whole system. And with my seven-year-old, um, he couldn't, he didn't understand the whole aiming system either as far as like the notch in the back sight and the, the post in the front sight. And I actually drew a picture for him one time. And as soon as I drew that, he totally got it and he's, and he's totally smashing it, smashing with it. And then my youngest, you know, he just started figuring it out. And every time we go, you know, I try to tell him, hey, you got to put, you got to line this thing up inside here. And that's what he was doing. And he's not 100% now, but at the same time, he's getting better. And he's really good at, you know, carrying the gun around, not pointing it at people. And he's just, you know, really good at learning the whole thing, you know, about safety. And safety really starts with us teaching kids. I mean, if we don't teach the next generation, then, you know, it's just, it's, it's hopeless. And, you know, something that I really enjoy doing with these guys is going out there and shooting, even though, you know, it was hot that day. But, you know, a little uh, you can see the sweat on my, my boys back here. But um, the coolest thing is, you know, the one thing I've learned about kids is that to me, the smallest adventure is a big adventure to them because the older you get, you know, the smaller the smaller things seem to get. but for a young person, you know, you could go do something that doesn't take a whole lot of time and it could be a huge adventure for them. So, you know, this is just something that we do and it's a lot of fun. And I've even had my seven year old, which when he, he was six, we were shooting at pigs and um, he definitely can shoot a high powered, I mean, shoot a high powered AR 15. When I say high powered, I shoot a 6.5 Grendel. He shot that. He definitely hits with it. He just, you know, does didn't understand where to aim at the animal that at that point. And he definitely has missed a couple of times just from not holding the gun tight. But it's all about, you know, taking them out, learning, getting the licks in and, and you know, teaching uh, this stuff because they're the next generation. And, uh, you know, if something goes off or whatever, I mean, at least if we had to go get food, we can do that even with a BB gun, if you had to, you know, so gun safety, man, is a huge, huge deal and uh, nighttime safety, big deal. So uh, that's going to pretty much wrap up that segment of the, of the podcast. So, and uh, this 
podcast again sponsored by until we get a new sponsor huh um it's sponsored by perceptive gear perceptive outdoor gear.com or it's perceptive gear.com but it's really called perceptive outdoor gear we sell night vision we sell thermal and uh we sell batteries for night vision and thermal including the the rattlers and that's a popular battery seller as well as uh, the hogsters as well as the site mark rates so that's what we do and we sell some tripods and stuff like that as well um electronic calls for microtech and uh you know just something that i started a few years ago because i love night hunting and i just wanted to do something within that space so here we go so as far as um generally after the the first segment i get into what's really going on what's going on with us with with, with me with the night hunting and to uh bring to be completely honest right now it's summertime uh summer just started a week ago like official summer and in my area right now i mean it has been just we've been getting hammered with rain for like two straight weeks i know there were some places that got well over 10 almost 20 inches of rain here in like two weeks it's been crazy and um generally it would be in the afternoons and in the mornings mostly at night and uh, i just really haven't been out now saturday was the first day that it kind of started shape or uh, clearing up a little bit and sunday and uh i'm back into my work week so um i haven't been out but i know it's definitely coming here in the next couple of days i got a couple of friends um that are raring to get out as well as i have a uh property that i need to go back and get after some pigs on before hunting season opens because uh, the dude that runs that property just doesn't like night hunting ops going on while deer season's in, which I don't really think affects anything because most of the time the deer just aren't really there all night and just it's not really a thing. But at the same time, I got to respect his wishes because he does let me go in there. So we're going to go try to get after some pigs and especially I'm going to try to get after the pigs with the with the boy here, try to get him my oldest try to get him a pig and then um you know just uh we got fourth of july week coming up so there's going to be some uh, i mean hopefully some stuff going down here now i know as far as um let's go back to this so so in this uh in, in my Facebook thing, I belong to a couple of different groups, and I'm just going to scroll through this and talk about it a little bit, but I'm in uh, predator hunting. Actually, no, I'm not in any of those groups, but I'm in a, a bunch of different groups on here, including lethal air predators. Um, and basically what I did was type in predator hunting accident and just to get that, but in, in the process of doing that, um, there were some cool pictures that I wanted to reference. And by the way, uh, back to the hunter shot with the with the video, the hunter shot um, in the back while hog hunting. That was the video I played earlier, just the audio. of. I do have to give credit uh, that came off of um, YouTube and that was Texas Predator and Hog Hunting. That was his channel. And he did a whole video on safety and talking about, um, you know, having a uh, basically a first aid kit when you're out and uh, just, you know, talking about different stuff. And then he actually played that video on YouTube, Texas predator and hog hunting. And that video, the name of that video is hunter shot in the back while hog hunting. So just to give him credit for that. Um, and I'll actually put that in the description below as well. A link to that video. I appreciate that video and just wanted to share that, but um, back up to here. So, so it's, you know, again, it's summertime and generally in the summertime we have, um, you know, you have your coyotes that are dinned up um, or they're just now, you know, the, the pups are just now starting to leave the den. And uh, honestly, I see a lot of dead deer on the road right now. So the biggest, the biggest predator right now for deer around my area is definitely uh, cars but this um it was just a video credit to florida real florida hunt and fishing which is rfhf um and i'm not sure i guess i don't know if somebody sent that in or what but that is definitely a coyote with a baby fawn 
So, and, and it's, I just typed in that thing. Um, the, the, the video, I didn't even talk about this other one, but the video that, that I talked about for the hog hunting was a hog hunting thing that happened that happened uh eight months or that was eight months ago that whenever that happened whenever this video came out but recently uh, another accident happened in indiana and i guess two two guys were coyote hunting on a property and um i'm not sure if somebody from another property shot them or if they shot each other or what but the cops got called and one of them had to get airlifted out and there was they were shot so you know with that being said i've definitely been on a property before shooting deer and there was a property next door that was had deer permits as well and they were shooting too and i'm gonna tell you right now that's pretty scary um because you don't know where they're shooting at and honestly we uh we tried to stay away from the area where they were at just because you just never know what's going to happen so um but so if and if somebody's hunting another property next door you know like if we hear something going on like that like we try to just stay clear of that area just because again you just never know where somebody's going to be shooting especially at nighttime and and what they're even thinking or what kind of training or what kind of experience they even have so um with that being said uh there was another gentleman who does a lot of predator hunting around this area he's probably one of the most influential predator hunters in this area and um i say influential i mean he has high numbers and you know he's not really an influencer but at the same time he definitely is well respected and he came out after that hunting accident a couple of weeks ago and said that, you know, if he goes to hunt a new property and somebody else has access to it, he just won't hunt it because you just never know when somebody's there and you're there, how things can go sideways really quick. So it makes a lot of sense. And most of the properties that we hunt, you know, we have control over, or if we, if we do if we don't have control over it um generally we're going to call the owner of the property before we do go there and let them know we're coming anyways and that way they're going to know hey if somebody's in there or not but most of the time we we hunt those properties alone so um, meaning like we we're the only people that have access to them so just definitely something to consider uh whenever doing this kind of stuff but right now again um the fawns are a big deal um and i saw another one here's another image of a fawn that's georgia deer hunting um this guy got this picture at six on june 8th that's in georgia same thing tie out with a fawn um there's just lots of that going on right now and uh you know i just wanted to talk about that because I've also been seeing, um, I've also, I'm going to shut this off real quick. So I've also been seeing a lot of um, pups being shot right now. And, uh, you know, that means that the pups are starting to come out of the den. And I'm really, I remember last year we ended up shooting a couple, like at least one pup. And it was just, you know, just, it was kind of weird. Um, we've never shot a dog in that spot before and he just came out of nowhere just off of a single female howl so you know now's about the time for that um by the way the the influencer that i just talked about a little while ago i mean he goes out on big properties and he's totally crushing right now so a lot of people say oh you know you don't hunt during the they don't hunt during the summertime well in florida we don't really i mean i i seem to think that looking back on the years like we just go all year round and really we we ended up killing a lot of dogs during the summertime and because we're not killing them for the fur anyways we're not really worried about that and we definitely kill a couple we've definitely killed a couple of dogs with some decent fur on them but at the same time like we don't really do it for the fur so and generally we're doing it to um protect the 
farmers cows we're we're doing it to you know um it's it's more for the farmers than and the landowners than anything because of the fact of how destructive the coyotes are to the wildlife and the and the livestock so you know it's summertime just seems like a big time time for us um although it is generally in florida it is super hot and sweaty at nighttime and the mosquitoes are generally pretty bad no matter where you go and especially with all the rain that we've had in the last couple of weeks i'm not looking forward to chasing pigs <laughs> for that reason i know they're going to the mosquitoes are going to be bad so i'm going to deal with that but again um you know if you don't get out you're not going to get them so so yeah episode 18 uh, night hunting safety. So, you know, I've been running this thing for a while now, um, 18 episodes. That seems like a lot, but not really. It's not even close to being a lot. And um, my goal for this, I know I've talked about this in other episodes, is to start doing some interviews. And uh, I'm definitely going to start reaching out to people for the interview stuff and try to get that rolling here soon. Um, I just, you know, I'm a pretty busy person and, oh, that, that's not really um, an excuse, but my goal for, for doing the, the whole podcast anyways was for, let me get back to my main screen here, where's the thing at, one second, my main thing for the I might as well just go back. Never mind. My main thing for doing this was to do interviews and stuff like that anyways. And, um, you know, I just haven't really gotten around to that part of it yet because I'm, a, I'm I mean, I have a full time job. I sell night vision and thermal on the side. I night hunt. Um, so I have kids, a family. I mean, it's 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 definitely a full uh, my plate's pretty full, but definitely my plan is to do that. So if you, if you hear this or watch this podcast and you have, um, you know, anything like maybe somebody that you would like me to interview or reach, you know, to reach out to interview, uh, drop a comment on this, on this thing. I, I believe you can drop a comment after it's posted, but I'm not sure I need to go back and check that, but, um, definitely drop a comment. I know there are tons of people i have different i even have my own little group um and with the air guns and stuff that's a whole nother thing so um you know there's tons of things that we can talk about in interviews and stuff like that so if you know if you have somebody that you'd like me to try to interview definitely drop a comment and i'll see what i can do to reach out to them and uh that's pretty much going to wrap up this video don't forget to check out perceptivegear.com and happy hunting during the summertime. And I guess we will see you on the next episode.